I'm Denise Phillip, content analyst for Engerati.com, and we're coming live to you from the African Utility Week. And with us in the studio today, we've got Isael De Silva, and he is the director at the Research Center at Strathmore University. Thank you very much for um, coming in to see us. It's lovely to see you again. Um, how is the event going so far? Very happy. I Good. made it. I missed first day because I was in Milan, but I came yesterday, I enjoyed half a day, and today I'm enjoying every minute of oh, this study day, yes. Fantastic. Um, the, we were talking about the um, 600 kilowatt solar project um, uh, that is going on at the university. Do you want to give us a little bit of a background on it and yes. um, what the progress is of that project so far? Right, right. Hola. I started working in Strathmore five years ago, yes. and I was given two tasks. One was to try to put Strathmore University in, onto the map of renewable energy. Yeah. And the second was starting engineering degree. This one we hope starting next year. But the solar system, the renewable energy, we have done quite a bit. So one, one of the things that we actually did was to start the Strathmore Energy Research Center which does four things. We do training, we do consultancy, we do research, and we do testing. We have an international standard laboratory to curb the low standard modules, batteries, and uh, all stuff related to the solar that comes, uh, you know, by some yes. business people who bring uh, substandard. So we, we want to curb that with the testing. So the, this center, and then, one, one thing that we consider important is that if you preach something, you have to use that thing. You can't preach, say, wine, uh, water and drink wine. So if I say solar is doable, I should go solar myself. So what we did was, let's put a solar a rooftop system that can cater for all our needs. and because we made it slightly bigger, we said, let's pursue a power purchase agreement such that if I produce power and I don't use it, I can sell it to the utility. So that was the, the, the thing. But then there is one very serious barrier for you to invest in renewable energy in Africa, and this is finance. If you go today to a bank and say, let me get a mortgage and I will produce, uh, say, renewable energy using solar, mm -hmm. you are in trouble financially because your collateral is going to be eaten because the, the interest rates in Africa are too high, yeah. too, far too high. So if you get some, say, uh, loan in dollar or euro, you may pay 10% per year. Mm -hmm. That will mm -hmm. eat your business, you probably will mm -hmm. go bankrupt. So, what we did is we looked for a, a green line of credit. So the uh, association for uh, French Association for Development, AFD, they had it. Nice. We've got the money to build our system uh, at 4.1 percent per year, 10 years to pay back. It's nice. a long period, yeah. and they gave us one year grace period. In in four months, my solar panel were, were on top of the roof. We were producing power and I was not servicing the loan for one year. So now we are paying back with the money we are saving from the electricity bill, we are paying back the loan. We will be through in five years time, and after that I will have 18 years of free electricity for the university. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And this particular project marks a, um, a landmark for solar PV in Kenya, doesn't it? It does, Tell yes. me why. Because actually, when, when you want to produce power with the solar, you want to sell it to the utility because they have a monopoly there. Kenya Power is the only institution that can sell power. So you have to sell to them so that they sell to others. Now, my system was the first one to get a power purchase agreement from Kenya Power. I am entitled by a contract to sell electricity to the utility for 20 years at 12 cents of a dollar per unit. This is sweet. Mm, for sure. Yes. Um, 
Also, you know, the university is also saying that it's um, the project could be a blueprint, um, you know, for future commercial, industrial, and utility scale projects. Is that how you view this project? It is. You see, one of the things that happens to we human beings is that, okay, we get fascinated about concepts, but unless you touch something, it's very hard to put your money in there. Yeah. So, I have been a kind of a first adopt, adopter, a pioneer, but now, in December last year, I had the opportunity to talk to 41 vice chancellors of universities in Kenya. We were in Mombasa in a very nice place near the beach, and I was preaching to them solar, and I was telling them, you go solar because you reduce your operational costs, yeah. you'll pay back this thing, you'll have this amount of years for free electricity, and yeah. uh, another important thing, you can educate your students about green energy. So my system is not simply 2,500 solar panels on my roof. No, it's a tool to educate my 5,000 students on renewable energy. Let's talk about that. Um, okay. I was having some discussions on the floor with some, um, you know, with some other delegates, and they were saying that there's not enough focus on education, on training, and um, uh, perhaps even um, upliftment in the communities. You know, teaching new skills and, and actually starting in the schools, starting in the universities. Uh, what is your opinion on that in Africa? I, do, you, do you think that's lacking? Yes, I couldn't agree more. When I was in Uganda, actually, I worked together with the uh, curriculum, National Curriculum Authority. We managed to change the primary school books and secondary school books to insert renewable energy. Telling those kids that you see the sun, it can generate power for you. So you don't need to use par uh, paraffin or kerosene. You don't use to use dry cell. You can get power from there and you can power your torch, you can power your lamps, you can charge your mobile phone at primary level because you see those are the new generation. That's the way you build. And then I am aware that my 5,000 students, they haven't had this kind of training. So for them, they are ignorant of, of the renewable energy industry. So what I do, doesn't matter whether they are doing law or commerce or IT, I take them all to the roof. I show them the panels, I show them the inverters, and then these modern systems, they have the so-called monitoring portal. I tell them, download it in your phone. You can check how much power this thing is producing now. <laughs> huh? So they get very excited. I also give them some uh, uh, attachments to my center so they come and learn more. And these ones I say, now go to the classes and tell your colleagues about it. It's very interesting. They're going to be transforming graduates. They're going to be moving from, right. from one faculty to, to the other. Yes, they can do business with it. You know? <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the um, opportunity for geothermal in Kenya. Um, there's, there's obviously a lot of um, development going on there right now. Right, what is right, your take yes. on it? You see, geothermal is, uh, I dare say, a more attractive source of uh, power than solar. Mm. Because obviously solar, is there during the day. You don't have sun at night. And most of our uh, loads are domestical. So they use power after 6.30 when the sun has gone. So unless you go into uh, storage, which is always expensive, you, there is a mismatch. When you need it, it's not there. Mm -hmm. But geothermal is 24 seven. You are tapping from the heat of the earth and that thing is power in those turbines 24 mm -hmm. 7 so they they serve as base load huh? and uh, thanks be to god kenya has a huge potential in geothermal they they have explored about 600 uh, 600 mega so far yeah but there is about 10,000 mega to explore. Mind you, 10,000 mega today would power Kenya five times. Why has this not been harnessed? Yes, you see, one of the problems is that you need capacity building. You need yeah. people who are trained on that thing, people who are able to do the prospect, to drill those, those uh, uh, holes and get those wells, and then make the idea of uh, after the, the, the heat is out, that is normal because it's just yeah. have steam turbine and then it is yeah. a normal thing. But the, the part of geothermal, we need to train people. But the second thing 
is risk. To dig one geothermal well costs you between four to six million dollars. One geothermal. Okay, you can be uh, lucky and you land on a 20 megawatts uh, a well, but you may not be so lucky and you land on a two megawatt and that one is not commercially viable. So what do you do with the money you invest? The good news, and this is super, is that the, the donor community, KFW, World Bank, Danida, uh, UK Aid, they created a package to min mitigate your risk. You, as a private company, go there, you drill. If you get power, you produce power, you sell power to KenGen. If you don't, we refund up to 40% of your, of your investment. That's going to completely change the sector altogether. Yes, yes. Um, so clearly investors um, sh should be flocking to this, to this country. Um, yeah. What would be your advice to, to private investors? Okay, I tell you, the, the, the countries which are around the so-called solar belt, solar belt is 35 degrees above equator, 35 degrees below equator. In, that, in this solar belt, the sun comes every day, never misses. In fact, for me, for my solar system, the sun began working on 24th June 2014. We are almost two years down the line. It has never missed a single day. If there is no sun in the morning, I know it's coming in the afternoon or the other way around. So, uh, paradoxically, less than 2% of the solar installation in this planet are in that solar belt. Less than two, meaning more than 98% of the installations are outside of the solar belt where the sun comes every now and then, you yes. know? Like yeah. in Norway, Sweden, Finland, you know, north of Germany. A lot Why of missed is it? opportunities. Is it because you are stupid? No. Mm. The barriers are four. One is financial. Mm. To get money in Kenya to do that, I think you will, you will be going wrong. So the good news is now Europe is in recession. They can take that money which is earning nothing in the bank, bring it here, buy a drill or buy panels and they will make, recover their money in five years and make a, a, a kill. So they cannot lose? Yes, it is, it is no, it's a no-brainer. Wait a moment. Second thing is that capacity building. You may want to have that thing working for the next 20, say at least seven years until you recover your money. Yeah. Who will take care of that thing for you? You have to have trained engineers. This is what I hope to be helping. Eh? Third one is the mismatch of the speed between you as a, pri a private sector who have put your money in investment and me as government. In Africa, there is still that mismatch. You submit your papers and eventually, you know, like you throw a stone to a hole and <laughs> nothing comes. Hey, hey. So this is something, for example, my PPA, I, as I told you, my system, I applied for the PPA in March 2014. In June 2014, I already was dispatching power to the grid. I signed the PPA on 15th October 2015. That was one and a half years after that. I was okay because my green line of credit was cheaper, because I was using most of it. But imagine if I had put my money in, in, in that solar system aiming to sell to you as a utility and you delay one and a half years. For one and a half years I keep dispatching new power for free. I would be dead. My last question to you. What would be your advice to the energy sector in, um, actually energy sectors across Africa when it, when it comes to attracting investment? What, what okay. would be your advice? Look, one of the things which is very important, and I feel it is like a paradigm shift, is that we tend to think what we are. Like, in my case, I'm academia. I think academia. In your case, you are government. You think government. In his case, he is private sector. He thinks private sector. Look, in order for something to be, uh, have a wider impact, a deeper impact, and a lasting impact go throughout time, you need the three together. Yeah? Unless you align government, private sector, and academia, R&D, you don't go far. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, my advice to whoever wants to get into this new, wonderful field of renewable energy industry, please, 
If you are private sector, think academia and government. If you are government, think academia and private sector. Mm. And if you are academia, you have to think private sector, you have to think government. Because unless you do that, policy will not be suitable. Or if people are not making money with your ideas and, and uh, development, mm. you are doomed. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for that advice. We, we could carry on talking for hours, I reckon. <laughs> we'll have to catch yeah. up um, together later. Perfect. Um, but thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope you um, enjoy the last couple of hours of the conference. And um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I am Denise from Injurati.